Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nunley Math. Thank you so much for joining us again uh, here today as we look at our second lesson in pre-algebra. You'll remember that pre-algebra gives us an opportunity to look at a variety of different topics. We're starting off with number sense. Uh, and in our first video, we discussed what, uh, what number systems means, as well as how to classify numbers into their number systems, and then to determine what the most specific number system was to which a number belonged. If you followed along with that video and have watched that video, now would be a great opportunity to uh, to review this just to make sure we've got everything uh, everything together. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to test your knowledge and see whether or not you actually understand the things that um, we talked about during that lesson. You'll remember that when we talked about number systems, we said that the real number system is the broadest category of numbers. It describes anything that can be found on a number line, and for our purposes in algebra one, it basically, or uh, I should say in pre-algebra, it basically um, encompasses just about everything we can possibly think of. There are some other number systems that exist outside the real number system, but they're not relative relevant to us at this point. The real number system can be split into either rational numbers or irrational numbers, those things that can be written as fractions and those that cannot. Um, we said that most numbers that we deal with on a regular basis tend to be rational numbers because irrational numbers are just simply uh, large and complex to work with. They are the decimals that go on and on forever without ending or repeating. We also made a note that rational numbers are anything that can be written as a fraction. So it's not just fractions. It could also be whole numbers, mixed numbers, terminating decimals, and repeating decimals. We also made the point that irrational numbers tend to be things like the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares. For example, the square root of 7 or something weird like that. Um, if it's not written in that form, we have to use a constant like pi to describe it, or we just have to get used to writing out really, really, really long things. Most people, when dealing with irrational numbers, we said, we'll just round this off and work with the closest rational number. Now, if we can determine that something is rational, uh, we then go on to determine whether it is an integer or not, meaning it does not have a fractional or decimal part. Um, it is a, if it is an integer, it is either a whole number or the opposite of a whole number. We said the whole number are just the non-negative integers. And the counting or natural numbers are the positive integers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We did also note that the whole numbers were the same as the counting numbers. They just also included a 0, um, which, which changed how they work slightly. I then gave you um, two models which represented the relationship between these systems. For the most part, we deal with large general uh, terms or general number systems, and we work our way down to more specific number systems. And I gave you these two models. This one is the one I told you that a lot of my students like. It's very common to see this inside of textbooks and shows how they fit together. Something cannot be both rational and irrational, but if it's rational, it might have better or more specific names. And then here's the model that I tend to like, which shows how um, if you start off at the top, as you work your way down the list, anything that is above my number on the list will be included in the naming. So if something's a whole number, it's automatically everything that's below it. And I could also work down, where if I go down here and I find the lowest value, I can just read up or I can start at the top and work my way down. It is important to note that it can never be both rational and irrational. If that uh, was a too quick of a run through for you, you might want to go back and take a look at that previous video. That might prove to be a big help for you. If you feel pretty comfortable and confident with these, I would suggest that you take just a moment and you pause the video and, and uh, try a couple different things for me. Um, for example, negative 15. Pause the video and see if you can find every number system that 15 belongs to. When you feel you're done, I'd suggest restarting the video. After you finish, I'm going to add these as we go and give you an opportunity to try them one at a time. If you find that you're missing several of them, you might want to go back and look up those definitions one more time. As I mentioned, negative 15 is real because it can be found on a number line. It can be written as a fraction. 
which means it cannot be irrational. It is an integer because it does not have a fractional or decimal part, but the whole numbers are 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, on and on. There are no negative signs with whole numbers. As soon as I know it's not whole, I know it cannot be a natural counting number either. Integers, of course, is the best name because it's the lowest down in my chart, meaning it's the most specific name that can apply. How about zero? Again, I'd pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and go on. Zero is real because it is on a number line. It can be written as the fraction zero over one, which means it's not irrational. Zero is an integer because integers are whole numbers and their opposites, and zero is a whole number. Zero is not a natural or counting number, which means whole number is the best name. 7.1 repeating. It can be found on a number line. It's just a little bit to the right of the 7. It can be written as a fraction because every repeating decimal is a fraction. This one happens to be 1 ninth. Since it can be written as a fraction, that, does not, that means it cannot be irrational. But anything that has a decimal will not be an integer, whole number, or natural or counting number. I'm going to pick up the pace here just a little bit for you. Of course, rational number is the best name. Radical 37. Give you a second to work on that on your own. Again, pause the video if you need time. It is real because um, radical 37 is between 6 and 7 on a number line. Um, it is not rational because it cannot be a perfect square. Um, that makes it irrational. As soon as it's irrational, I know it's not any of the others. Irrational is the best name. 83 is real because it's on a number line. It can be written as 83 over 1, which means it's not irrational. It is a positive whole number, which means it is an integer and a whole number and a counting number. Counting your natural is the best name. And here again, I'm going to do these others a little bit faster for you. If you want to try them, take a second, pause the video, and take a look. And again, the check marks represent the best name or most specific name that applies to a particular number. I want to stretch this in a little bit different direction today because um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer and a big fan of thinking about how things relate to the number line. You're going to find that the better you understand your number line, the better you're going to understand the relationships between numbers, particularly when we start dealing with, with uh, integers and positives and negatives and rational numbers. Uh, like that. So um, I do want to take just a moment and go back and hit the number line again. You may find this slide to be a bit of a review for you. If it's not, you're going to want to make some notes along the way because there's going to be some very important information on here. But I am going to do it pretty quickly, which means you're probably going to need to look at it a couple different times if you struggle with finding things on number lines. Now that a number line is just an illustration of the real numbers and the relationships to one another. So when I remember that real numbers are anything that can be found on a number line, anything that I can place along these spaces would be considered a real number. It's important to remember that on a number line, the farther to the right we move, the greater our value. The farther to the left we move, the lesser our value. And we can begin to talk about uh, numbers and groups of numbers based on where they're located on this number line. And we use certain symbols for that. For example, if I said to you R, this symbol, and 5. If you don't know this symbol, you're going to want to make a note of that somewhere so you don't forget it. It's very, very important. This is the greater than or equal to symbol. This statement says all real numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. If I wanted to identify those on a number line, there's a couple things I would need to make sure I did. First of all, if I'm talking about things that are greater than or equal to 5, it's important for me to know that whatever this is, it's going to start and stop at 5. I'm going to go 5 and everything larger or of greater value. Which direction are those numbers? Which numbers are greater than 5? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4? Of course, you know it's the zero. It's not the zero, one, two, three, four. It's the six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the numbers that are on this side are greater than five. Crap on a stick. Let's try this one more time. 
When we talk about number lines, it's important for us to realize that their purpose is to illustrate the real numbers and their relationships to one another. So, I can think of the real numbers as being anything that can be found on this line. And when I look at this line, I can remember that numbers of greater value move to the right, and numbers that are of lesser value are going to be on the left. Notice that we kind of center around this zero because most numbers are, descri are descriptions of things in terms of their distance from zero. Five dollars is five spaces or five dollars more than zero. Being in debt five dollars is also five spaces from zero. It just happens to be in the opposite direction. Now, we talk about these numbers on this line using some symbols like this. If you don't already know this symbol, I would uh, make take a piece of paper and make a note of that. That symbol is going to become very, very important. You might also have done this with an X in some of your other classes where you describe inequalities like X is greater than or equal to 5. I like to use R because R reminds me of real numbers. And so I can think of this statement as being all the real numbers that are greater than or equal to 5 all real numbers greater than or equal to 5. Well, it's important for me, if I'm looking for things that are of greater value than 5, to know where 5 is. And so I put a dot above 5 on the number line. I know in some of your classes you probably put the dot on the number line. I prefer to put it above because it's just easier for me to see and read. If you're a student in my class, it's an expectation that you'll do it that way. So we found where r is equal to 5, or the real number that's equal to 5, but I also want the real numbers that are greater than 5. Well, I look over here and I can see the greater than is here to the right, and so I color those in. Notice a couple things about my graph on my number line. First of all, I put an arrow on the end because it shows this pattern is going to continue even though I ran out of space on my paper or on my number line as it's drawn. The number line goes on forever, and so I want to show that I'm going to talk about those numbers as well. The second thing I want you to notice is that I connected my, uh, my points. The real numbers greater than 5 aren't just 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but it also includes all the fractions and decimals that are in between here. Remember, real numbers can be fractions, decimals, and so on. Does that make sense? If it does, try this one. All real numbers less than or equal to negative 4. All real numbers less than or equal to negative 4. Again, it's important to know where that negative 4 is at, so I'm going to go ahead and put the dot there. That's my boundary. I want the things that have less value than that. Again, lesser value is always to the left, and so I draw my line. Again, the arrow shows that just because I ran out of room doesn't mean that I run out of numbers, and I connect the dots to show that there are fractions and decimals that are in between here. Can you see the difference between this and what we saw earlier? all real numbers, notice I'm looking for things that are larger than 5, whereas up here I found things that were greater than or equal to 5. The difference being, of course, there's no equal sign. I still need to know where that 5 is, but I'm going to leave it out. Notice here my dot is colored in because I'm including the 5 in this set of solutions, but up here my circle is open, meaning that I'm leaving that number out. The numbers that are greater than 5 are going to be very similar to the numbers that are greater than or equal to. You're just not going to include 5 in that. Hopefully then of course you realize that this is a less than symbol and we're going to do the same thing on this side with the negative 4. Notice my little typo there. If you follow these videos along you'll notice I tend to do that a little bit. Put those negatives in there. There we go. Real numbers that are less than or equal to negative 4 well, there's my negative 4. That would not be included in the list because negative 4 isn't less than itself. But I am still going to go forever to the left. Does that make sense? Tell you what, I want you to try it on your own. R is less than negative 2. Why don't you pause the video, see if you can graph that on your own, and then restart the video to see if what you did was correct. Notice it's important for me to know where negative 2 is, but negative 2 is not part of my solution because there is no equal sign. I want the things that are smaller than negative 2. Negative 2 is not smaller than itself. The things that are less than negative 2 are going to be to the left because things that are lesser are always on the left. Is that alright? Try this one. 
Again, pause the video, see what you can do with that. This says all real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Well, zero's here. The things that are greater than zero are this direction. Notice the arrow because I know that it's going to go on. I just ran out of room. Notice the closed circle because zero is one of the solutions. Another one? All real numbers greater than negative three. Real numbers greater than negative three. Again, pause the video, give that a try. Negative three is here, but it is not a solution. Greater than is to the right. Last one. Again, pause the video and try this. I'm going to have a closed circle at nine. The numbers that are less than that are to the left. Hopefully that's comfortable to you. Hopefully that's a review of things you already learned in elementary school because this is not really our focus today. This is stuff we need to know in order to do what I want to try to do today. And that is this. Suppose I were to tell you that if R represents real numbers, I'm going to use I to represent integers, W to represent whole numbers, N to represent natural numbers. And I were to ask you to graph the integers that are bigger than 6. This becomes a little more complicated because we have to remember not only which way is greater, not only whether 6 is left in or left out, but we also have to remember what an integer is. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Positive and negative whole numbers. So it's all the whole numbers and their opposites. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative, and so on and so forth. You see how this changes our rules just a little bit? I'm not going to graph every real number. I'm only graphing the integers. If it helps you, you might want to keep in mind that an open circle means leave it out. We do that when we're doing greater than. We're going to leave out the 6. And a closed circle means keep it in. Please pardon my spelling. That's a, a deliberate, uh, deliberate memory device for you. Keep it in if it's closed. So let's talk about integers greater than 6. That's where 6 is. Remember, I'm leaving the 6 out. The numbers that are greater than 6 are going to be to the right. So I'm going to include those, but I have to keep in mind that I'm only graphing integers. 6 is an integer, but I left it out. 7 is an integer. 8 is an integer. 9 is an integer. 10 is an integer. And that pattern is going to continue. Notice that in this case, I did not draw a straight line because those are fractions and decimals, and fractions and decimals are not integers. Got the idea? A little tricky, isn't it? Tell you what, try this one. Integers greater than or equal to 5. Again, if you feel pretty confident, go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. It's important to know where 5 is. It's also important to know that 5 is included because of the equal sign. So 5 is equal to 5, but I also want the integers that are greater than 5. Well, that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so on. How about this one? Integers less than negative 8. Integers less than negative 8. Negative 8 is here. Remember, I'm going to do less than. That's to the left. And I only want integers. Negative 9, negative 10, and so on. Last one. How about natural numbers less than or equal to 4? Again, 4 is here. It is included because of the equal sign. So I'm going to use a closed sign. That means keep it in our set. The numbers that are less than 4 are going to be to the left, but we have to keep in mind it's only natural numbers. There's no fractions. There's no decimals. So 3 is natural. 2 is natural. 1 is natural, but notice 0 has to be left out of our data set because 0 is not a natural number. Natural numbers start at 1.
Now, putting the open circle here at zero is optional. You don't have to do that, but I put it in here so you can see that at least we thought about it or recognize that it was a part of our discussion, okay? This has only four solutions. This can be just a little bit tricky. I'm going to give you a couple more, and I would suggest that you really take some time and work through these, okay? Um, notice again, I put to for you what the letters represent, R for real, I for integers, W for whole, in for natural, and I also put the remember or the reminder here of open meaning leave it out and close meaning keep it in. If you would take a second and try this, W less than two. Hopefully you've had a minute to do that. I know that two is here. I also know I have to leave it out because I don't want the things that equal two. I want the things that are less, which means I'm going to be looking here to the left, but I only want whole numbers. 1 is a whole number, 0 is a whole number, but that's it. Negative 1 is less than 2, but negative 1 is not a whole number, therefore I would leave it out. How about integers less than or equal to negative 1? I got this. It's important to know where the negative 1 is, and you're not going to collect, uh, connect the dots because you don't want fractions or decimals. Integers greater than negative 3? Well, negative 3 is left out, but negative 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 would all be included. Again, I'm not connecting because those are not, uh, the fractions and decimals are not integers. One more of these. Natural numbers less than or equal to 4. Natural numbers less than or equal to 4. I think that's the same as the last slide we just did, so that's a little bit easier, isn't it? Did you notice that? I don't know. Tell you what, I do want to show you one more thing. These are the ones that I would consider to be a little tricky or a little hard. W is less than negative 4 is asking you to do whole numbers less than negative 4. It's important to know where negative 4 is, but it's also important to know what whole numbers are smaller than negative 4. Remember, your whole numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are none. There are no whole numbers that are less than negative 4 because they're all greater than 0. See why that's tricky? How about this? This is a set with two inequalities in it. This is negative 2 is less than or equal to integers, which are less than or equal to 4. Or an easier way to think about that would be to think of this as a between. I want the integers that are between negative 2 and negative 4. Remember, integers do not include fractions or decimals. Negative 2 is my smallest value. It's included. And I'm going to do all the integers up to 4, which is also included. No connecting the dots because no fractions or decimals. You might want to pause the video and try this one. This one's uh, very similar. Again, it means between. Notice the difference here. Since I don't have the equal signs, the negative 8 and the negative 3 are left out. Last one, natural numbers from negative 7 to 2. Natural numbers between negative 7 and 2. Try that. Hopefully you did. And hopefully you realize that the natural numbers are just the 1 and the 2. There are lots of other numbers between negative 7 and 2, but these are the only ones that we would describe as natural. Hopefully this hasn't been too long for you. Again, we're trying to lay some foundation work and some groundwork for some really cool and interesting things over the next several days. Uh, but I wanted to put all this out here for you. If you were in my class, we would spend a great deal of time over the next couple of days um, getting used to this idea and how we represent these. So, um, you know, it might be worth making up some practice problems on your own and giving them a shot. As always, I do appreciate you taking the time to join us here today. I know you got a lot of videos you could be watching, so it means a lot that you take the time to watch ours. If you enjoy this, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you can receive all our pre-algebra content. Also, leave this comment in the comment section so we know that you uh, you uh, you appreciated this or that you have some suggestions for us in the future. As always, uh, thank you so much for watching. We wish you guys all the best. Take care.